guys, just wanted to make a quick video to discuss the current retro gaming market. In particular, we're talking NES, NES number one, number two, close second, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and then we're going to go down to the N64 after that. This market we're going to discuss, I just wanted to have a little rant slash discussion about this market and why the prices keep going up. Because there's, I see speculators all the time, people keep saying, oh, maybe the prices are going to come down. Well, I got a news flash for you. They ain't never going to come down. And yeah, you can give me the argument that sometimes the prices fluctuate. Some games have already come down in price. Sure, but let's look at the long-term trend. Okay, they might plateau at some point, but with inflation kicking in, they're, they're always going to go up. And I want to talk about why. Okay, why the prices have just boomed. Okay, the, what did the, when did the boom start? I want to say 2009. 2010 was probably the beginning of the real boom and anyone who has been in the market that long knows exactly what I'm talking about this boom has been phenomenal astronomical boom just some of these like I remember Snow Brothers back in who knows maybe it was 2010 maybe it was 2011 actually it wouldn't surprise me but I remember going to buy that for $25 and at the time that was actually really expensive uh, <laughs> You know, it was one of the more pricier games, and I thought I could get it for cheaper. Then it went to 50, then it went to 75, so then I said, okay, okay, I'll pay 50, I'll pay 50. And sure enough, I just paid $400 for it not that long ago. That's Canadian dollars. You can get it for a little bit cheaper, US, but it's pretty much 400 It's gonna, it's going to 800 It's going to be at 1000 It's going to be at the dinosaur's peak rarity slash price at some point. But why are the prices going up and why have they boomed? A combination of many things, but I'm going to focus on just two to three. Okay. Number one, the retro gamers who grew up on these old school consoles have reached an age such as myself where they have money, they have jobs, and they have disposable income to purchase these games. They have the money and the funds for the first time in their life where they can afford to dish out $100, $500, $5,000, in some cases more. I have a $10,000 collection right now, at least $10,000, and I'm going to be sinking another $10,000 into it by the time I'm done. It's, it's, it's not going away. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep buying. Number two, YouTube. What has YouTube done for the retro market? YouTube has also brought in a new audience, a new audience who didn't actually grow up on these games. So people like me started collecting because I love these games and I grew up playing them. And, and they just don't make games like, like they did back then. The, the new games are not retro games. They're just, they're lacking something. They don't have that magic that the retro games had. But the new generation who didn't grow up on these are getting introduced to these retro games and they want these retro games thanks to YouTubers like the Angry, Angry Video Game Nerd. The last reason I wanted to quickly mention is partly due to the investment slash scumbag reseller uh, group that's out there. I'll admit I'm, I'm part of that investment group. The other reason I buy retro games is because the prices keep going up. Okay. Who, it's a great investment. I am an investor. I buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds, mostly just stocks. Uh, I, buy, I buy private businesses. I have websites. You name it. I've dabbled in it. But I also like to buy rare games. Rare retro games that's the other market and and it is it is increasing prices there are sellers out there resellers investors who will go and and corner the market on certain games or try to corner the market just to increase prices so there you have it let me know what you think below do you agree disagree what do you think like subscribe see you later